Hey guys, so um, I am actually on my webcam right now. Are they even called webcams anymore? <laughs> um, but I unfortunately just went through all of my footage that I had for um, my um, books a la mode video and the entire thing is out of focus and I just don't have the time right now to sit down and film it and have it look presentable by any means. So we're doing this right now. So I wanted to talk about The Invasion of the Tearling, which was our Book Sala Mode book for this month of January 2019. Um, and uh, um, just, yeah, just talk about it a little bit. I am extremely tired, so please forgive that. Also, I snipped my finger with some scissors yesterday, so that was super fun. So The Invasion of the Tearling is written by Erica Johansson. It's the second book in the series. I don't know if it's a trilogy. I think it is. Um, I have not read the last book in the, the series yet, but I obviously did read the first book and I absolutely, absolutely fell in love with it. Erica Johansson just has kind of more of an old school way of writing where she takes the time to develop characters' interpersonal connections she reminds me a lot of, um, you know, a little bit of, I think her name is Lee Bardugo, Bar, Bardugo, I, I, Bardugo, <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce her, I'll say I'm sorry. She wrote, um, A Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom and several other books, um, and uh, also a little bit of Tolkien and a little bit of Brandon Sanderson, who wrote Mistborn, I believe. Um, just kind of taking the time to develop interpersonal relationships between the characters so that you get to know the characters that way. And, you know, their thoughts and their feelings and their opinions. And you can really start to form a complete picture of these characters characters of these people who live in this world and just some of the plot twists that she has included in her books are beautiful and stunning and absolutely amazing and I just genuinely am so thankful and so appreciative of the work that she does. Um, I am a huge fan of all sorts of books. I love fiction, nonfiction. I love romance, historical romance, historical books. I love a lot of books. There's very few genres that I don't really jive with because I love reading, I love learning, I love experiencing emotions and new things and stuff like that. And for me, Erica Johansson just really does this. She really takes into account some of the realism that you would need in wartime and negotiations and how you would, you know, think as a queen, as a ruler, as a subject, as a guard. All these different people have their own opinions and personalities. You don't just have, you know, one person's perspective the whole time, which is very interesting and um, a little bit refreshing because I find that in a lot of books nowadays that are written, they're written from the first person and not all of them, um, but I definitely think that having multiple perspectives is very, um, just very unique and interesting and I really like that style of writing personally. Um, and like I said, Johansson just has such a way with words. She makes you feel like you are in the tear. She makes you feel like you are in Mortmans. And probably one of the most compelling and lovely things that she does is she doesn't just have her main bad guy, her main villain, be this crazy evil queen. She has a she has a personality. She is a, a, a fully fleshed out person. I don't necessarily want to say human, but she's a fully fleshed out person. And I think that that, again, is really unique and really lovely because so many times 
you get these characters who have a lot of, you know, detail put into them, but they're just kind of crazy. They don't have a lot of, I don't know, they don't have a lot of, like, depth to them. They're just kind of like, oh, well, she's just a crazy witch lady, so that's just how she is. <laughs> like, like, you learn a lot about the queen, and the Red Queen, I think she is. Um, <laughs> and uh, I just think that it's so interesting and intriguing and uh, something I really love when authors do. And obviously there are, you know, plenty of great books that have villains in them that are not fully fleshed out characters. But I think it adds another dimension to a story if the main antagonist is a fully fleshed out person, as it were. Um, and uh, um, obviously I highly suggest that you read the first book because there is a lot of, is a, is a very plot heavy book. Um, it's not... Um, like a romance novel or anything like that. Again, like it kind of goes back to the age of like Tolkien and I know Lee Bardugo or Drugo is not like back then, but I read those books several years ago when they first came out and the, it reminds me of that. It reminds me of, you know, even... just she just has the qualities of a beautiful beautiful writer and I just immensely appreciate her work um, I definitely would suggest you read this book <laughs> kind of no matter what you're into it has a little bit of politics in it it has a little bit of court life and the plot twists that she throws in are just mind-boggling and for me this is one of those book series that I have to take it one book at a time there are some book series that I can just boom 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 just read them straight in a row like whatever but every once in a while I have to get all get to a book and I'll have to stop and actually think about what the author has written and think about what these characters and what this world has become and for me every single one of these books is like that you have to sit there and process what has happened in the book and recollect everything that has gone on because there's just so much to it. So I think that um, I'm definitely going to read the next one. It's just going to take me a little bit to kind of fully, I guess, digest, if you would, um, everything that was in the book and then I'll be able to move to the next one. Um, but it's just, it's captivating and entrancing and pulls you in like so many good books do, but I haven't read a book series in so long that's done that to me and just fully immersed me to the point where, I don't know if you guys do this, but... I know I do. I'll go and I'll be so like immersed in a book series that when it comes to real life, I start thinking like the characters or I start thinking almost in the voice of the author. And for me, that's how I know that number one, I've been reading a lot. <laughs> number two, that, you know, this is a good series. It draws you in. It keeps you there. It keeps you embedded in this world to the point where you don't want to put the book down. You don't want to go to anything else. And I just think that that's the, the mark of a truly good author. Um, and uh, again, there are some book series. I'm not saying that book series that don't do that to me are bad by any means, but I do hold a special place in my heart for series, a book series that can do that to me and is able to just, you know, in a, one reading session, make me laugh out loud and make the facial expressions of the characters and also bring me to tears. And I just think that it's just, 
it's just so good. <laughs> um, so I know that the camera quality is low and I'm sure that the visual, I mean the audio quality is crap, but I did want to hop on here. I still wanted to post a bookseller mode for you guys and I really, really hope that my next video is not blurry. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys want to basically join an online book club where you can literally watch this video at any point after you have read the book I mean I technically don't give a lot of spoilers or anything like that I just talk about my thoughts and opinions on the book but I want to correspond with you guys that's the whole point of the book club so let me know your favorite part down below let me know what you think about the Queen let me know you know do you like Kelsey, how, what about the mace, the fetch, pen, like, what do you think about the, you know, how she's kind of built up the growing tension, the monster in the hills sort of thing, like, what do you, what do you think, what do you feel, Lily Mayhew's stuff, holy crap, <laughs> um, let me know in the comments down below, please, please, please. I would appreciate it so much. I want to hear from you guys. So if you guys like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe. I promise all of my books on mode videos, all my videos are not going to be on a webcam. <laughs> I just wanted to get this out to you guys. And if you do like these videos, then make sure to subscribe. I think I just said that. I don't know. If I did, I'm really sorry. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.